So good evening, everyone. Our next session is on the role clarity, and the speaker for today's session is Mr. Lokesh Pandey. Mr. Lokesh Pandey comes with around 25 years of work experience in the field of HR. He is a postgraduate in public administration from the HP University and also holds PGD in labor laws from the HP University and PGD in HRM from the Pondicherry University. He has managed human resource functions at various levels in groups like RPG, IBM and Hero, name a few. He has also worked for few startups and has an expertise in setting HR functions for startups in service industries. Talent acquisition and talent management are areas he is passionate about. He has supported Pandit Deen, Deendayal Energy University, Gandhinagar, in the selection process of candidates for MBA programs in the year 2020. Lokesh is based in Gurugram and presently associated as the general manager for HR and administration with Singapore based FDI real estate company Experian Developers Private Limited. Welcome, sir. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, as uh, Sara uh, provided my introduction, so I come with almost uh, more than two decades of work experience in uh, uh, different industries. And uh, presently, uh, for the last seven, eight years, I'm associated with the real estate industry. So in my present assignment, I work with experienced developers. Mm -hmm. So thank you all for uh, taking time out uh, to be uh, and being here today. And uh, also, uh, I take uh, this opportunity to thank uh, Kredai and the Kohan team to provide this opportunity to interact with uh, you all people. So uh, today, uh, in this session, uh, we'll be looking at the importance of uh, role clarity. So when we say role clarity, uh, it is uh, by default uh, assumed by the HR uh, professionals as well as the, the head of departments, the senior management. Uh, and even the, the, the promoters, that uh, the role clarity is a default thing which any or every employee or a expected employee, a prospective employee is supposed to have. But uh, my experience is, you know, quite different. Uh, in industry, if we, if we see people, whether it is a new joinee or even if uh, we talk about the people who are uh, veteran in the system, in an organization, at times, I have found that uh, they also lack uh, clarity on what uh, they are supposed to do, how, why, when. So, uh, if we see, you know, businesses are trying to reinvent uh, themselves uh, to stay in trend. And uh, as a result of this, the, the jobs and, or the roles, these are changing so fast with such a high pace that uh, my take is that you know all employees uh, should be on a regular basis should be made aware about you know the clarity in terms of the expectation so uh, once you know uh, whenever an employee is having a, a role clarity uh, they understand specifically what is expected to them in terms of their you know day to day activities or the overall objectives they know uh, what task they are supposed to perform. So certainly, you know, this gives uh, enhancement in terms of the ownership, the accountability at the individual level also. And certainly, you know, this uh, helps in increasing, enhancing the, the, the efficiency uh, in totality for any organization. <laughs> So, uh, so I'll be sharing a couple of slides that possibly last five, 10 minutes would be there for uh, uh, any questions. Uh, there are certain formats uh, which would be part of uh, the slides. So if anyone wants to have, so I think credit team uh, can be connected for that and uh, those uh, can be taken uh, from the, the team. So uh, uh, setting the, the if I talk about the, the agenda, so typically, you know, uh, though uh, here we are going to discuss more about the role clarity to the new journeys, but I'll try to you know, also cover uh, about the existing people who are in the setup. So uh, the role clarity to any new inducted person should be, you know, through uh, three different ways. One is uh, while uh, a person is being inducted. So this includes the, the complete you know, hiring process, that phase also. So typically, uh, 
before a person joins in this process should start then of course the, the onboarding piece the onboarding part which includes the orientation program the the induction process and all and then it has to be a continuous hand holding activity for a, a, a long time so it shouldn't happen that you know once we hire a person then suddenly post reduction 2 3 days one week 10 days and that person is you know uh, loses touch so it has to be a, a complete uh, regular continuous activity uh, where uh, people uh, should have you know a, a regular touch base from their bosses from the management or the different stakeholders so that they all are aware that uh, what they are doing is uh, is in the the correct manner uh, what is the expectation from the organization is that is as per that ways so uh, when we talk about the the, the so can i request you sir yeah. so can i request you to just click on that uh, slide show so that the whole thing becomes a bigger screen okay just to say that's right better no uh no uh, yes sir much better yes right, right, right. so uh so when we talk about the the hiring stage so that is the the pre onboarding piece so as a candidate who may be a prospective you know employee for any organization things should be made uh, at the very beginning at the hiring process when it starts in terms of the clarity why that person is being hired uh so if we uh, talk about uh, at that stage so best thing is that uh, we should be ready with a job description so uh, not to be confused with the the job specs which is typically for the internal hiring team or for the the particular department so when we uh, talk about job description so it means that uh, what that person is supposed to be why will you be here so if we see if we say in a simple language uh the care is the the expected objectives or goals which a person is to be supposed to achieve while working those should be you know shared maybe not exactly in the the fashion uh, the way internally those are um, uh, circulated to the employees but as a candidate uh, the person should have a visibility uh one thing uh, identification of the culture fit that is very important uh, I'll, i'll come to later in terms of the details what exactly here i mean to say a uh, person should be very clear in terms of the reporting relationship and should be at the hiring stage itself it should be competency fit so for that the, the recruitment team or if it is outsource activity through you know, some external consultant so that team or the consultant should be made very clear by the the promoters or by the, the, uh, the particular uh, user function in terms of uh, all these things so uh, for example uh, if uh, we talk about the the job description so i'd like to share you know, one simple format uh, i hope that most of us uh, would be using it but uh, many times uh, we have seen that uh, these are not shared with the with the external consultant or even with the internal you know recruitment teams or maybe uh, with the, the candidates so uh, if we talk about you know uh, uh, a sample care for example so if you see uh, if you are able to see uh, this is one of the the sample care eh, for a position of uh, a project head so what are the the expected uh, the result a person has to come uh, to deliver to the organization maybe not exactly in this way but uh, in a in some other fashion can be shared because these may be you know at times some internal uh, figures which uh, the the company or the organization may not be comfortable but the person should be given some sort of idea that these are the the expected you know timelines or the kind of cost we operate or the kind of savings we are expecting you being the project head would be able to provide us or these are the number of projects which within this kind of time frame is supposed to 
you are supposed to deliver so uh, uh, these are the audit or the statutory requirement which we follow where you would be the owner so in in that kind of you know fashion the the candidate would be you know quite clear that what is the expectation of the new organization with that person similarly if we see you know another kpi or a kra uh, format which is meant for say a, a crm head so typically in a in a real estate setup so collections is a, a major you know activity for any crm function so what can what kind of the timelines would be there what kind of the collections in terms of overall revenue would be there uh what kind of you know customer engagement is expected from a, a crm head or a, a similar resource in a crm function so if we share you know these kind of things so uh, typically uh, uh, we are you know able to uh, have a, a better talent uh, being hired who's confident and who will be you know a better fit for that kind of role uh, if we keep that kind of transparency similarly if we talk about uh, the 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 job description which uh, i was earlier uh, saying so if we give a clarity to the person that these would be the the top priorities under his or her role these would be the the first three months or first six months kind of you know targets or priorities so that the person mentally prepares himself or herself and uh, uh, you know uh, plan accordingly so uh, so i think uh, these are the things which at times as an hr professional or as a as a uh, Uh, promoters we uh, fail to you know execute or to share so uh, for example if you see uh, one sample of a of a security head so if you are hiring a security head so person should be you know aware that these can be particularly a person who may be not coming from the same industry or a person who has recently you know got retired from any of the armed forces so the basic thing is security establishing security he would be aware but the the, the lesson part the crowd control uh, the project side the, there is you know a lot of labor movement so if you give these kind of you know clarity to that person uh, at the candidature level so things are quite you know uh, clearer for him as well as for the, the his supervisors at a later stage when that person joins in same way uh, i would like to share you know one more jd again a very you know simple kind of uh, description form which is uh, uh, a design and architecture head so a lot of things depend on a organization basis in certain cases the things are outsourced to a larger extent in certain cases the dependency on the design agency is much lesser so a person who's getting inducted should be aware that these are the the team members if you are having you know Forty members and twenty-five projects. So obviously, there would be a lot of things which would be outsourced. So in that case, the the responsibility of that person would be delivering the things, the design through the architecture firms. So that person should be made clear that there would be a lot of external stakeholder or vendor management in this role, so that there are no surprises later on coming to that person once he joins in or she joins in, or again to the organization also. So. Uh, uh, so my take has been always there that you know person or the the, the candidature level people should be made you know very clear about uh, the role responsibility the team size even the basic things you know the extensive travel would be required or not uh, whether you know what kind of uh, relationship would be there in terms of reporting so coming to the clarity on the reporting relationship so at times you know there are roles where there is a dual kind of relationship reporting relationship it can be you know a functional or administrative uh solid line dotted line so these should be made very clear at the very beginning before hiring itself so that there are you know again no problems which are faced by the the employee or the, the teams or the uh, the organization uh if you talk about the smaller organization so when i say smaller smaller in terms of scale or magnitude we know no uh, a day to day interaction with the promoter is always there with most of the staff 
but the person is not supposed to report directly to the the promoter or, or the owner there is you know some other kind of relationship so that person should be made very clear at the very beginning about that thing also that a regular interaction is something different and a formal relationship is something very different uh while hiring uh, while identifying a resource while uh, giving you know clarity or a direction in terms of the the roles one thing uh, which uh, the entire organization whether it is the recruitment team or the the functional uh, uh, recruiters are there non hr recruiters that try to have a person who is max cultural culture fit to the organization we may not possible to have you know 100% or a 95% kind of culture fit but when we say culture fit the maximum so you identify that these are my areas which are mandatory so this happens particularly when you know a person or a employee moves from a very small organization to a very large organization or vice versa it happens when a person moves from a a function a to a function b so when i say functions so these may be you know uh similar kind of functions say accounts to finance finance to commercial commercial to legal hr to legal sales to marketing so those kind of things uh, same way where a person moves in from a a branch or a project specific role to a corporate role so we have to see that uh, the person which whom we are plan to hire fits into our organization setup uh for that you know we can use uh, some sort of competency framework also so for example i would like to share you know uh, a small uh, dictionary uh, or a directory of the competency so these are you know few uh, of the the competencies which we use in our organization so depending on the you know core things technical behavioral maybe for the the senior leadership there can be you know separate leadership uh, competencies also so these are you know something which is mandate for a specific role level wise department wise so we identify and accordingly you know recruiter also should be you know well equipped trained to identify map the people as per you know these kind of requirements uh, in terms of the the efficiency so slightly drifting from the the main subject so uh, coming to the orientation and onboarding program so why it is important so we all know there are you know few things about uh, the onboarding program basic thing is that it ensure that you know in terms of the paperwork we are compliant so workforce compliance is there uh but there are you know some other aspects so if there is a, a detailed uh, very robust kind of uh, orientation or induction program onboarding program so this helps in you know reducing employees anxiety and stress though at a onboarding level we have done a lot of homework we did our level best gave clarity so that there are no confusions later on in spite of that there can be a possibility particularly at a junior level or at a middle level that there may be some sort of anxiety which uh, a person who has now been onboarded may feel so to avoid those kind of things uh, Uh, a robust you know induction program helps and this eventually leads to a, a higher you know employee engagement which ultimately is going to help in terms of the increase you know employment uh, employees productivity so we have to keep uh, these things in mind uh, that you know ultimately uh, like in the earlier session uh, vardhan was talking about the employee retention so so if we have you know uh, a, a strong and a robust uh, program from day one this gives a, a kind of you know branding uh, to the organization that ultimately you know this helps in the, the employee retention uh, part also so uh, so coming back to uh, that stage when a person has been inducted has been made clear about you know different kind of expectations uh so how how it uh, works is that we welcome person get you know familiarized with the new setup with new people new teams at the very that stage as an organization we must ensure that one that we have written documented sops 
these standard operating procedures are shared at the very beginning with a you know, complete download to a, a new person who has been inducted so this again you know reiterate the 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 feeling the the fact that you know we take care of you whatever we spoke to you at the initial stage of your hiring so that is being now you know documented in this form these are the, the sops the guidelines which are going to help you these are the expectation this these are the ways you are supposed to you know complete your task uh there has to be at every stage a very transparent communication again and again on the structure on the reporting relationship we made it at the you know initial stage of the hiring we are again you know downloading it doubling it at that stage of you know once a person has been onboarded is in the system very new but again you know we are reminding re- refreshing things so uh, we have to take care of you know on a regular intervals uh, about you know uh, this communication so communication is you know always a important tool to provide role clarity whether it is written documented verbal all kind of communication so one person is aware of the organization's vision for what organization stands what is the mission what are the values so what so if you know from the very beginning on a daily basis a duly inducted employee gets a regular you know feel about these things so he or she is well equipped to accommodate himself or herself you know in the in the, the new setup so uh, regular communication about all these aspects and of course the the organization objectives which can be you know short term immediate maybe for a quarter for a half yearly thing for a particular financial year basis which the person that the uh, new joint person is deriving his or her goals so uh, all these you know steps uh, and the finally the signing of the care at a very you know initial stage of joining so that there is no ambiguity absolute clarity what i'm supposed to do so that you know at the time of say if there is a confirmation process after 6 months there are no surprises मेरा तो ये मतलब था मैं तो ये समझ रहा था दैट शुडेंट हैपन सो इफ यू हैव एंड पर्टिकुलरली यू नो व्हेन आई टॉक अबाउट केआरएस सो वेयर एवर पॉसिबल नंबर ड्रिवन वी नो फॉर सेल्स द नंबर्स आर द इजीएस्ट थिंग यू सेल यू नो यू जनरेट दिस काइंड ऑफ रेवेन्यू सेम वेज फॉर प्रोडक्शन बट देयर मे बी यू नो मेनी अदर फंक्शंस वेयर नंबर ड्रिवन थिंग्स आर नॉट सो इजी so for that we have to ensure that wherever possible we try to align the kras basis the the specific numbers so that there is absolute clarity to the the bosses to the manager to the supervisor as well as to the the new joint person now uh, coming to the the third stage which is the post onboarding so one thing uh, i would suggest that we should you know assign a buddy so buddy can be you know any person who is better than the the system within that preferably from the same department who acts as a a friend philosopher and guide to the new person uh, a regular interaction this may be you know different person from the immediate boss uh so this person not only gives uh, provides a confidence uh, to the new joiner but also you know acts as a as a bridge between the the initials at the initial stage acts as a bridge between the the overall organization and that uh, new person may be from hr may not be from hr preferably the person should be from that function who understand the things helps to make the new person understand about the the role the task and all the the second part is which is a long term hand holding my take for that is that at least for Six months. There has to be a, a regular, you know, handholding by the immediate manager, by the the upline manager, and of course from HR side. So things are again and again, you know, downloaded to 
to the new person and uh, these should be you know, supported by some uh, time bound reviews there has to be you know some recognition to the new person once he or she is able to achieve some milestone so for example you know here i would like to uh, share uh, one thing in the the next slide so how these you know reviews can happen so uh, so reviews normally we do at the at the completion of six months which is a normal practice when a person you know is supposed to get uh, confirmed because normally it is a six months kind of profession but if you if your organization is having you know this kind of uh, tenure uh, six months so better to you know have some uh, in between milestone so so for example you know how to keep track is with this kind of format for example we see so it's a small you know a, a, a review form which can be used maybe after one month two months three months depending on the the, the level of the the person so it's a review form for a new joiner not to wait for you know six months so a self assessment kind of thing which a person does a uh, reporting manager you know get involved in that provide you know clarity if there is anything missing hr also gets involved and identify you know if there are some training areas where person needs to be involved in so so idea is again you know if you do it on 30 days 60 days though at times it looks that like 30 days is too early but if you are having a regular you know interaction with that person so then 30 days would be you know uh, would not uh, look like you know, a, a very early kind of uh, stage so uh, if we you know follow these kind of mechanism so uh, certainly you know uh, uh, we would be able to uh, get the things done from a person for which he has been or she has been taken for that ensure that you know there is a regular communication and uh, try to put you know matrices to measure the things so two months we did so these are the things okay we'll be meeting after another two months six months we'll review for your profession one year down the line there would be your your annual appraisal activity after one and a half year you would be eligible for first level of promotion we'll do a review so regular communication has to be matrix driven and always provide a documented feedback so so these are the ways i think you know if we are doing uh, things would be better than the, the expected ways uh so i think uh, that is all from my side uh, any questions uh, Welcome. Thank you, Loki sir. We have a few questions for you. Um, yeah. You spoke about uh, new employees and giving them the roles and responsibilities. I'm, I'm going. I'm just thinking. We have, you know, employees already in the uh, organization. And suppose, how do we bring role clarity to existing employees uh, who get promoted? And how do we uh, streamline that process also? so sir uh, if you talk about a person who if you are talking about a person who is being promoted so obviously by assumption is that the person is in the system for at least 2 years right yes so for any such kind of person uh, when you are promoting so obviously the promotion would be based on merit and the person has already you know done something to achieve that promotion so at least from that part he or she is very clear now coming to the second stage that while you are reviewing and eventually communicating him or her about the promotion at the same time at the same stage ensure that what kind of tasks challenges expectation that new role or level comes with into that employee needs to be communicated because at times what uh, we have seen that a person who was who say a fund manager accounts becomes a deputy manager accounts he or she does the same thing there is no change 
so one ensure that you know whenever there is a a, a grade enhancement which we call promotion in a simple language that is supported by some element of role change enhanced responsibility once that is done only then you know uh, as an organization or as an employer we will be able to communicate that person and that person would be also will be you know convinced that yes this is what i got this is what i deserved and now these are the things which are being expected from me for the next one year or two year so that if i achieve that or if i surpasses that with a say 110% kind of achievement then i would be ready for the next next role or next movement so the best part is that immediately when you are identifying a potential a person for a potential promotion keep a, a things ready with the help of the head of the department or his immediate manager about what he or she will be now doing for the next one year otherwise it is only a designation change which don't make us sense and we yeah. fall in, into that trap you know at many times absolutely that the change of role and the change of the behavioral uh, the you know the the so it needs to do all uh, sorry i got locked off uh, yeah sir okay so can i move to my next question sure sure please okay um so suppose uh, you mentioned about you know before on prepare uh, the roles and the responsibilities um and then you uh, hire the person and uh, while you sit with that person is it a good opportunity to discuss with him whether this is possible or not or just assign that saying that this is the roles and responsibility or do you um allow like a combined uh, discussion to arrive at a right roles and responsibilities uh, between both the the employer so- and the employee sara my idea behind this is that it has to be a two way uh, communication it has to be dialogue so if uh, it would be better that if we give a holistic picture so that to understand the comfort level not only about the the skill level but the the adaptability and the, the comfort level of that candidate you know in terms of his or her interest areas or confidence whether this is possible or not or if possible to what extent obviously you know 100% may not be there maybe if we are fine with 90% 80% i mean you decide what is your comfort level your matrix same with the candidate decide those i have experience that at times you know we shared a particular you know expected target or number so so candidates make very clear that you know for that this particularly i'm talking about the senior level so if you are hiring a cfo and there is some big picture 3000 crores 4000 crores then they come up that this is possible for me but for that i require this kind of team this kind of setup this kind of support are you willing to provide that or do you have that kind of thing so yes. that so at that level your once your frequency starts matching so then you come to you know uh, to arrive, you are able to arrive to some conclusion and same applies with the candidate Okay. So maybe you know at times we not be comfortable giving the exact picture because uh, like during my presentation also I shared that there may be some you know confidential things, but at least we should be be sharing you know some idea so that there are again you know no last moment surprises. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I'll just take one more question. Uh, how do you go about defining roles with the top management when it involves family members in our uh, business and this applies to most of our uh, organizations mm. so quite tricky thing uh, quite difficult also but uh, one thing uh, where it's a promoter driven thing and you have you know one single promoter i'm giving that example so there the things are quite busy easy if there are you know multiple people uncle son or you know a group of investors then it becomes quite difficult but if there is one single person uh, either you convince him or her with your ideas or get convinced with his or her ideas so arrive to you know some consensus 
that this is what we are looking for for example i was uh, talking about the competencies also which is again a very you know detailed subject but if there are few things where you both parties i mean as a recruiter or a, as a management professional and from the pro- promoter side the other party they both arrive to some conclusion that is better so that you know the the selection process becomes easy you if you are you know giving that assignment to some external agency you are also able to make them understand that this is what exactly we are looking for otherwise it, at times you know it becomes a endless exercise you see you know 20 cvs five candidates and no one is you know able to crack and you himself as a recruiter or as a you know hr head are not aware that what the thing is missing why i'm yes. not able to you know make the things uh, done so for that it's better that the 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 promoter and the whosoever is involved in the selection process whether it is you know some functional head or hr or the recruitment team they should be on the you know same page things makes you know uh, that way you are able to make things easier for yourself as well as to the other people okay okay got it. so just one more question now what is the right way to balance freedom of work tasks and giving clearly defined tasks to employees that is also something which is well uh, for that uh, i think uh, one thing is that you have to differentiate though it's a, again a thin line between the individual task the teams of the department task and the company's task so normally what happens is that uh, in a very you know matrix driven kind of thing once you give some objective some goals and the person is able to achieve due to whether hard work or maybe you know easy objectives they think and this happens particularly at a junior level or at a middle level that my my job is done i'm entitled for now promotion maybe you know 150% bonus 15% high and all until unless you are not able to align that person individual team member to the the overall departmental task or if not department maybe you know a reach regions task or a project task irrespective of department it is quite difficult to you know make people convince maybe you know by end of the day as the hr professional you will say this is the bell curve you fall in under you know this category so that so that's a forceful kind of thing but if you want to make people convince that yes. what they would be getting or what they have got is just rational and fair it's better to make the things align together at the very beginning of the, the you know the performance year so if, if you know there are say i was giving a, a example of a kra of a crm head so say there is a collection requirement of 500 crore in a year and there are 10 team members so if until unless you know you are not aligning that 500 crores with the individual kra maybe you know there would be a possibility a deputy manager would be having 25 crore executive would be having 7 crore kind of collection target but in totality until unless you know you are not able to meet 350 cr so you are not going getting the things uh, in the way you are expecting that communication has to be made very clear and that is only possible if you align all the 10 team members plus the crm head accountable for the complete you know set of activities collections or whatever it is okay that has to become you know that has to be done at the very beginning not you know in the month of november when you know things are already half done half baked noted noted yes absolutely uh i think uh, that comes to an end to our uh, session it was an absolutely wonderful session and uh, and very knowledgeable because you know sometimes we tend to think how do we do this better and uh, you've just answered all our queries uh, thank, thank you so much sir. thank you for taking time off and being a part of credai uh, thank you sir thanks again thanks to you know credai team and uh, advat and team and uh, thanks uh, jyadeep thanks sir once again bye bye good night thank you sir.